Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Investing Untangled. This is my second video in the video series on stock analysis. I did the first video explaining to you quantitative analysis of stocks. I've left the link of that video in the description below. So in today's video, I'll be talking about how to calculate the intrinsic value of a stock. I'll also be showing you what kind of valuation ratios you have to look at when you want to figure out a buy price for yourself. And finally, how you make a buy price decision for yourself. I'll use a real-time example of Google to show you how you calculate all these values and how you can make an investment decision. So let's jump right into the analysis. In my last video, I explained to you how I break down my stock analysis into three steps. And I showed you how to perform step one of the analysis, which is quantitative or fundamental analysis. In this video, I'll explain the step two of the process, which is assessing valuation. This means we want to know what is a reasonable price to pay for the company that we are interested in. Let's see how we can assess the valuations. I assess valuation of a stock by looking at valuation ratios, and then I calculate the intrinsic value of the stock. We want to make sure that we pay a price which is 30% or less than the fair price of the stock. This would essentially mean that we bought the stock at a 30% discount. Buying stocks is, in this sense, no different than regular shopping. We always want to buy great stuff at a bargain price. In the stocks, the 30% discount is called a margin of safety, which means if we are wrong somewhere in our analysis, we at least have a price cushion called a margin of safety, which will cut our losses. This reminds me of a famous saying in the book, The Dando Investor by Monish Pabrai, where he says, heads I win, tails I don't lose much. And this is stock investing 101. We'll first start with valuation ratios. So what are valuation ratios? These ratios give us an idea of how expensive or cheap a company's stock is in relation to earnings or net income, its sales or revenue, its book value, and its projected earnings growth. These ratios basically tell you how much of a price you're paying to own the company's stock. The higher a price you pay in relation to earnings, sales, book value, or earnings growth projection, the lower your returns are going to be. It is like buying a house which is worth $100,000 and you paid a million for it. So obviously you lost money in that deal and it was not that a smart investment. It works in a similar way in stocks and that is why it is a cardinal mistake to not look at the valuation when buying a stock. It can result in poor returns or even permanent loss of initial capital. I like to invest in companies where the PE ratio is lower than 15, price to sales ratio is lower than 4, price to book is lower than 2, and price to earnings growth is lower than 1. These numbers will suggest that the company is undervalued. And what that means is that you can buy its stock at a price which is at a discount to its intrinsic or fair value. And this reminds me of another quote, this time by Warren Buffett, which says, price is what you pay and value is what you get. So understand what is the price you're paying in relation to the value of a company. That is, that is very, very important and fundamental. And thankfully, we do not even have to calculate the, any of these numbers and any of these ratios ourselves. Most financial websites will do it for us. And I'll show you an example how that works. Okay, let's look at Google here. This is a screenshot from Yahoo Finance page. And if you type the uh, ticker for Google, which is G-O-O-G here, and go to statistics, you will get all these numbers. Yahoo Finance gives you numbers for the last several quarters, but you need a premium account to access the numbers for previous years. But you can use Morningstar to access these numbers from previous years. Like I said in my previous video, I always like to compare historical values across multiple years to see how a company is doing. There can be a potential one-off incident that skews these numbers in one or the other direction. And uh, you know that, that can fool us as investors. So you should always look at numbers from, uh, from the past several years to get an, uh, an understanding of the business and how it is operating. So Morningstar also gives you the price to cash flow ratio, which is also good to look at to get a complete understanding of the valuation. I generally like to invest uh, in, in companies with price to cash flow lower than 10. 
ideally less than eight, that's that's perfect. And one thing that you should keep in mind is that companies will have variable numbers depending on what sector they are part of, so what industry they operate in. Google is a tech company and tech giants like Google trade uh, at a higher price to earnings, price to sales and price to book multiples, while financial sector companies like banks and uh, insurance companies generally trade at a lower multiple. So if you're comparing two companies and checking their valuation, make sure that they fall in the same sector. You cannot compare a tech company with, with, a, with a bank or with an insurance company. So from these ratios, you can see that Google never came to a very attractive price range in the last five years or so. And this is pretty typical of uh, big giant tech companies that have good strong growth potential moving forward. Okay, moving on to calculating the intrinsic value or the fair price of a stock. The most common method of doing this is the discounted cash flow model or the DCF model. It estimates the value of an investment based on its expected future returns. The calculation involves a projected estimate of the future growth and cash flows of the company and based on these projections, you discount them to the present value to see what those future cash flows might actually look like in today's money. You can find pre-calculated DCF values also online, which I'll show you today, so you don't have to do these DCF calculations all yourself. And I'll make another video uh, to show you how I use an online tool that I found to be very useful for estimating the DCF value. And there you can play around with different factors and you have to input your own numbers and that gives you what its estimation is with the DCF method. And please remember that you should always use multiple methods of valuation because here you're you know estimating these numbers for the future so you have to be fairly certain that that this is the way things will pan out for your company and this is why you should compare different models and use the ratios that i talked about here in this video i'll show you where to find pre-calculated dcf values for a stock and I'll also explain to you another method to figure out the buy price with a 30% margin of safety. And this is called the PE valuation method. And this I actually adapted from the book Buffettology by Mary Buffett. Mary Buffett is the ex-daughter-in-law of Warren Buffett and she has written multiple books uh, explaining how Warren does valuations on the stocks and what kind of research analysis he does. So I highly recommend those books. Okay guys, now I'll show you how to access this DCF value directly from gurufocus.com. So you go to the website gurufocus, go to the search bar and type in the ticker for Google, which is G-O-O-G -O -O -G, and go to the summary. So this pulls up the stock page for Google. The good thing with Guru Focus is that it gives you this estimation of the stock price already. So, so here Guru Focus already thinks that it is modestly overvalued, which is not good for our returns. So if we go to the DCF tab here to access the calculator, it shows us the DCF value. At 12% discount rate, it shows us that the fair value of Google is $984. I like to do this calculation at 10%, so I drop it down to 10%, and you see that uh, Guru Focus thinks that it is worth $1,175 at a 10% discount rate, which is much lower than the current stock price of $1,738. So there is no margin of safety. So this is the same margin of safety that we were talking about in the video. There is no margin of safety in this, in this uh, investment. So this will mean that if we buy Google at these prices, the chances of us getting not that great returns are very high. Okay, now I'll show you how to run the PE valuation method that I adapted from the book Buffettology by Mary Buffett. So you need five year average PE that you can obtain from Morningstar that I showed you earlier in the video how to get that. And you need current EPS, which is earnings per share. And this also you can obtain from Morningstar or Yahoo Finance or any other financial website. So the way the formula works is you calculate a 70% discount on five year average PE by multiplying the five-year average PE by 0.7. And then our buy price will be decided by margin of safety PE, that is this one, this value here, times EPS that we got from the Morningstar or Yahoo Finance website. Okay, let's analyze Google and see how we can run this valuation method on it. So I got these numbers from Morningstar and I saw that five-year average PE for Google is 33.73. And the current earnings per share is 
So applying the formula, margin of safety PE will be 33.73, the actual five-year average PE times 0.7, which gives us 23.61. And our buy price is margin of safety PE times the EPS, which is 23.61, the value that I got from here, times 51.71, which is the current EPS. And that gives me a buy price of $1,220. And the current price at which Google is trading is $1,738, which is significantly higher than our current buy price that we got from this valuation method. And what this PE valuation method and also the Guru Focus DCF calculator tell us is that Google is overvalued compared to our buy price range, which is around $1,220 by PE valuation method. And by the DCF method, it was around $1,170 range. So I generally take an average of both these methods and see what is the price range that I'll be comfortable paying for a company. And in this case, Google seems overvalued clearly. And the way this PE valuation method works is basically we see what is the average price range at which Google has traded in the last five years. And now we want to pay a price which is at a 30% discount to that average price. And as you can see in the March stock market lows, Google actually dropped way below the margin of safety price that we calculated. So it went down all the way to 1072 so this would have been a great price to buy this company at. And at this price now, where it stands at $1,738, we'll have limited rates of return going forward compared to the prices that existed back in, in March. Therefore, the biggest virtue for stock investment folks is to have patience. We gotta have our watch list ready with the companies that we have researched using these techniques that I described here, and then keep waiting patiently for the stocks to tumble. And if it doesn't happen, you look for some other company and keep your research going. And in the current market, there are very few opportunities right now available. I found some interesting companies that are at a discount and may offer great returns going forward. I'll make some videos about them very soon, explaining to you why I think that those companies may offer nice returns in the long run, but the investment opportunities have become very rare. Okay, this finishes today's analysis. I explained to you how I look at valuations using uh, different models, what ratios I look at, and how I come up with my own buy price that I am comfortable paying for the stock. So in the next video, I'll show you how I perform the final qualitative analysis to ensure that this is really a great company that I wanna buy. I wanna understand completely their business model and what their management team is doing and how, how they're deploying their capital, etc. So this will be the topic that I'll cover in my next video. Thank you guys for sticking around until the end of the video. I hope you got some value out of it. Please consider leaving a like and subscribing to my channel, Investing Untangled. I'll be posting new videos regarding stock research and the companies that I'm investing in currently very soon. So stay tuned and I'll see you in my next video.